A dark night in a city that knows how to keep its secrets. But on the 12th floor of the Acme building, one man is still trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Van Doyle, Private Eye. It was the week before Christmas, and I was looking at a card from my sister Georgina, and one from my insurance man, Jerry Eisenbrake, wishing me a Merry Christmas and a collision-free New Year. One from Sugar that said, Deck the halls and clear the decks. A Merry Christmas to my ex. Jimmy at the five spot sent one that said, In appreciation of your patronage. And there was one from someone named Sharon. It said, Happy Holidays. And underneath she wrote, XO, XO, XO. There's no return address. Probably a cruel joke. Mr. Doyle? Van Doyle? What can I do for you? My name is Kathy Kirkpatrick, and I need your help, Mr. Doyle. I'm desperate. I'd seen her before, but couldn't remember where. She was the sort of woman who, the moment you looked at her, a guy sort of instinctively starts to go on his knees. She was blonde and her skin was like melted caramel. And she looked like someone whose job it was to escort you to heaven and fit you with wings. You've got to help me, Mr. Doyle. I'm in a terrible situation. There are women to whom a man might say no, or I don't think so, or maybe later. This was not one of those women. She was a woman who made me feel privileged just to breathe the air she had recently exhaled. But something seemed strange about her, something mysterious, as if she was hiding something. Is something wrong, Mr. Doyle? No, just uh, an old heart condition triggered by beauty. That's why I stick to the office as much as possible. What can I do for you, Miss Kirkpatrick? Mr. Doyle? It's the weekend before Christmas, and I absolutely can't find a Christmas gift for my boyfriend, Bob. He's about your size and your age, and, well, I thought you might have some ideas. At the mention of a boyfriend, I felt a cold chill in my heart. My first idea was to kill him with a clothes hanger, but I decided not to mention it. Tell me more about your beloved, Miss Kirkpatrick, but do you mind if we do it around the corner at the five spot? It's a little bistro for the broken-hearted. We went to the five spot, and the place was empty. Hi, Evan. How's everything going? Just fine. Jimmy, this is Miss Kathy Kirkpatrick. Pleased to make acquaintance. But have we met before? You look, uh, awful familiar. Oh, I'm sure we haven't. May we order now? I'll just have a glass of white wine. Okay, Van? I'll have the usual. Okay, coming right up. You have today's paper, Jimmy. Sure I do. I bring it out with drink. Oh, Van, you don't really need to read the paper, do you? She began to fidget in her seat as if she were positioning for a better getaway. I wondered what I did wrong. I'm just going to look through today's headlines. Why don't you tell me more about your boyfriend? Mr. Doyle. Maybe it's best I leave now. Miss Kirkpatrick, why would you leave now? We just ordered our drinks. I'm sorry, Mr. Doyle. I really should. (laughs) She left so suddenly, I didn't even get to say goodbye. She was gone. Here is vodka. And then, your vodka martini with string bean and today's paper. I looked down at the newspaper that unfurled in front of me. The front page read, Young woman affiliated with the mafia. Wanted for murder is still on the loose. Curious about the story that made the front page, I read on. The woman, Kathy Kirkpatrick, is linked to the well-known mafia boss, Vinge de Maria, for whom she lures male victims. She has assisted in the murder of three men. Any contact with her is said to be very dangerous. I jumped out of my seat immediately. I felt my heart had been ripped out by the cold hand of a temptress. I had to find her. Her beauty had me in a complete trance. She infiltrated my mind. I started down the street, 
quickening my pace, looking down every alley I passed. I kept going for at least four blocks until out of the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of a blonde block of hair. The lock disappeared just as soon as I had seen it. I had already sprinted past too many alleys to count. I ran through a Wall Street vendor. Then I had to navigate through some of New York's vibrant cars. An old man tried to get me to take a carriage ride, but I didn't have the time. Then I ran past the AAC, the annual asshole convention. And then I tripped over a homeless man. Finally, I stopped and backed up onto an alley I had just run past. There she was, sitting on an old milk crate, head in hands. Her curly blonde locks fell in her face, dripping with tears. Miss Kirkpatrick, why did you really come to see me? I'd heard about you from a friend. I heard you can fix problems, and I got a big one. The problem doesn't have to do with your boyfriend, does it? No, Mr. Doyle, it doesn't. I got in with the wrong crowd, and they wouldn't let me go till I did what they told me to do. They told you to lure those men? Yes, Mr. Doyle. It was their neck or mine. You were next on their hit list. So they sent me to- Wait, I'm on a mafia hit list? That's not important. I was never going to hurt you. I volunteered for this job knowing you could help me get out. You're my only chance to escape. Miss Kirkpatrick, I'm sure I can help you if you only just come back with me. Mr. Doyle, please. I just need to get home where they won't find me. Where do you live? Piscopatawada Quadimagan on the Penobscot Peninsula. It's in Maine. Yeah, I've heard of that place. Where they make that... Penobscot isotropic cough syrup made with pumpkins, pea pods, peach pits, poppy seeds, and papyrus. Pumpkins, pea pods, poppy seeds, and peppercorn. Oh, no papyrus? The papyrus is optional. I never knew that. But... Well, Miss Kirkpatrick, you know I'll do anything to help you. So... I'm a private investigator, honey. The best I can do is get you a head start. I guess this is goodbye? Regrettably, yes. Thanks, Mr. Doyle. Before I leave, I just wanted to let you know that it's not you, it's me. I don't think that saying works in this situation. Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Doyle. I'll see you around. Sure. Any time, Miss Kirkpatrick. With that, I let her go. She briefly stopped to kiss me on the cheek before walking out of the alley. Her blonde hair flew behind her in the wind as she turned the corner out of sight. Back at the five spot, I sat, finishing my second drink. Nothing mends a broken heart like a good friend, Jack Daniels. You look kind of droopy, big fellow. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You like eggnog and vodka? No thanks. You sure? I'm sure. I bring vodka, good, I bring vodka. She sure was beautiful, wasn't she? It is shame she left in such great hurry. Yeah, I have a feeling I'll see her again, though. A dark night in a city that knows how to keep its secrets. But on the 12th floor of the Acme building, one man is still trying to find the answers to life's persistent questions. Van Doyle. Private Eye.